When Uncle Ben passed on and told Peter that, oh, with great power comes great responsibility, it's likely that the would-be wall crawler didn't predict it would take the form of a sinister rogues gallery, one comprised of goblins, vultures, and mobsters with tombstones for faces. Ah, anyway. Fortunately for Marvel fans the world over, Spider-Man is often considered to have one of the best rogues galleries in comics. Through decades worth of adventures and over the course of numerous different series, he has built up a veritable smorgasbord of evil villains, filled with characters capable of wreaking havoc all on their own, all together as part of the Sinister Six. Ah, much like what culture's very own wrestling section. Anyway, everyone's favourite webby boy has his work cut out for him when it comes to big bads. So with that in mind, I'm new from What Culture Comics, and here are the 10 greatest Spider-Man villains of all time. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number 10, Sandman. Flint Marco had one heck of a bad day. While on the run from the law, he fled to a nuclear testing site and came into contact with some irradiated sand. Which, to be fair, we hate because it's coarse, rough, and irritating. And it gets everywhere. But just like in the real world, this turned him into a pile of sentient sand. Oh my god, Anakin Skywalker, run away now. Sandman's shapeshifting abilities make him a difficult foe to fight, and Spider-Man has often had to resort to creative methods such as turning him into glass, or even isolating the single grain that contains his consciousness. What makes Sandman so great, however, is how tragic a villain he actually is. Everyone thought he was on the mend for a time, turning back on his evil ways, and it was actually quite controversial when writer J. Michael Straczynski decided to make him evil again. Whether he works better as a hero or a villain is really up to you. We just love Sandman. Number 9. Craven the Hunter the maniacal big game hunter Craven has always been obsessed with defeating Spider-Man to prove his abilities as a hunter. In the classic storyline, Craven's Last Hunt, which is just about the second best Spidey story going, I'd say, an aging Sergei Kravinov enacted one last plan. He shot Spider-Man with a tranquilizer dart and buried him alive. He then took up the mantle himself and went on a brutal crusade of vigilantism to prove himself as his enemy's superior. Having proven his point in his own mind and with nothing else to live for, he then shot himself. If Marvel had just refused to pull a Marvel and let the character end there, no one would have complained. It was an incredible way for Kraven to bow out. But with comics being comics, Kraven's come back more times than Spidey himself has had wardrobe changes. Number 8. Mysterio the Master of Illusion is one of Peter Parker's most confounding enemies, using holograms and mind-altering gas to create illusions convincing enough to trick even his own spidey sense. While there have been several people to wear the iconic fishbowl, former stuntman Quentin Beck is the most famous. Unlike the Beck of the real world, this one has used his knowledge of special effects, not music, to commit numerous crimes, even faking his own death for a period of time. Mysterio also discovered a portal to the Ultimate Universe and used a robotic avatar to terrorize the less technologically advanced advanced Earth. This then led to the first ever team-up between Peter Parker and Miles Morales, and we've never looked back since. Number 7. Electro Electro is proven to be one of Spider-Man's most dangerous foes. An electrical engineer named Max Dillon who was struck by lightning, he now has the power to produce 1 million volts of electricity from his body. Electro was also responsible for Spider-Man joining the New Avengers. He attacked the raft, a prison containing some of America's worst supervillains, and freed all the inmates inside, the event that brought that team of heroes together. It also proved that Electro was a real threat and was way past the point where a pair of insulated boots was enough to stop him. Number 6. The Lizard Dr. Kurt Connors is a well-meaning scientist whose experiment went horribly, horribly wrong. In this case, his attempts to use lizard DNA to regrow his lost arm caused Kurt to transform into a humanoid reptile with a desire to turn all of mankind into lizard people, which, as far as reptilian motivations go, is nowhere near as chill as feeding a pizza addiction and satirizing the works of Frank Miller. Spider-Man was able to stop him and reverse his friend's transformation, but that was far from the end. Kurt constantly struggled trying to maintain his humanity against his cold-blooded impulses, and often found himself transforming back into his reptilian alter ego. Things took yet another dark twist when the lizard proved his lack of emotions by killing his own son. His own son. Seriously, it wasn't the best story, but hey. Number 5. Morlan 
It can often be hard for newer villains to compete with old classics, but Morlan made one heck of a first impression. In his first appearance, Morlan pushed Spider-Man to his limit, launching a series of constant attacks that left the wall crawler near broken. It was only by using his scientific knowledge that Peter was able to just about defeat him. When Morlan reappeared, he upped the ante by actually killing Spider-Man, leading to his own rebirth at the hands of the other. No, not that other, the, the other one. Yeah, you know the one I mean. So how could he beat that? Well, in Spider-Verse, Morlan teamed up with the rest of his family to battle an entire multiverse's worth of spider beings. More like more fun, am I right? <laughs> I'm here all day, folks. Number 4. Kingpin yeah, yeah, I know. Kingpin is more of a Daredevil villain these days, but he did start out his comics career as a Spidey rogue through and through. Despite being the arch enemy of Daredevil, Kingpin has also been a huge threat for Spider-Man, in a literal and figurative sense. Wilson Fisk's criminal dealings have often caused him to cross paths with the Warcrawler. In fact, he first came during a period when Spider-Man had hung up his costume. Kingpin's crime wave was the impetus that he needed to resume his career as the Warcrawler. Kingpin has proven himself to be a resilient opponent over the years, even through numerous defeats. He always manages to stay one step ahead of the law, and he's also responsible for the creation of some of Spider-Man's other enemies like Spot and Black Cat. Number 3. Dr. Octopus while his tentacles make him a physical threat, the real danger of Dr. Otto Octavius is he's one of the few villains capable of matching minds with Peter Parker, which he actually did literally in Dan Slott's Superior Spider-Man. What also makes Otto Octavius special is that he has achieved what almost no other bad guy has. He killed Spider-Man. He managed to swap minds with the wall crawler, trapping Peter's mind in his broken body as it died. Then he himself went on to become a newer, superior Spider-Man. Peter has since come back and taken in control of his body, but also is still out there doing his octopus thing. Number 2. Venom There are quite a few villains who serve as an evil counterpart to their heroes, but none, arguably, do it better than Venom. The vengeance-obsessed Dark Spider-Man almost instantly became a classic part of Spidey's rogues gallery and has been around, well, pretty consistently since his first appearance. While Spider-Man's symbiote has had many wearers, the best is still the original, discredited journalist Eddie Brock. Eddie is also an absolute legend for getting revenge on those f***ing annoying kids from Spider-Man 2 who kept on losing using their balloons. If you've played 2005's Ultimate Spider-Man, you'll know what I mean. Number 1. Green Goblin Well, 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 aren't we predictable? What, expecting Aunt May, were you? Maybe a little segment on how Peter Parker is actually the real villain? Nah, course not, because the Osborns are the best. As the Green Goblin, Norman Osborn has proved himself to be Spider-Man's most sadistic enemy. One of the few to know the web slinger's real identity, he has tortured Peter over the years with a cruel barrage of psychological manipulation, twisted plots like the Clone Saga, and, of course, the murder of Gwen Stacy. Stacey, which I'm still not over by the way, it's really sad. However, Osborn has also proven himself to be a capable villain in his own right. He used his devious mind to take control of S.H.I.E.L.D. and menace not just Spider-Man, but all the superheroes of the world. And really, that's what makes him so dangerous. He transcends more than just Spider-Man, and in that way, Green Goblin is undoubtedly the best Spidey villain, Harry or Norman. Hey, look, they made it through to the end of the video. I'm so proud of them. Jesus Christ, I wouldn't have. No. But thanks anyway. Like, share, and subscribe below. And look at the people who made this. Like I made him, my son Ewan. Also, there's some stuff above us, which you might want to check out. Brilliant.